Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul, and I am a nerd, and you are lucky enough to be here for the July 2015 TABS 3 Virtual User Group Meeting pre presented by the friendly folk here at Attorney Computer Systems, Leanne, Mary Jo, and Paul, and Patty. Uh, we're all friendly. Corny, Steve, Shauna, everybody. Friendly people, a friendly group of people, and here you are attending the TAF3 Virtual User Group meeting with those friendly people. Uh, today, we are going to talk about uh, printer settings and the client manager, two of my favorite TAF3 topics. But before we do that, just a couple seconds on this. This right here is your GoToWebinar control panel. If you're still looking at it, it is because you have not pressed this button here that looks like an arrow pointing to the right because had you pressed that button, this thing would have slid right off the right-hand side of your screen. You would, of course, want to do that so that you can see what might be behind it, which would be my screen. So if you've got this thing obliterating your screen right now, just click this button, it'll go away. This button will turn into an arrow pointing to the left, which is how you slide this screen back. If you are shy and you have a question, you'll want to know that you can type that question here. Whoops. <laughs> Don't click when you're in go to in the presentation software. Type, type that question here. Hit the send button. Leanne, our humble and yet prompt moderator, we made her wait at Bob Evans for lunch. No, she was very prompt, too prompt. Leanne, our humble and prompt moderator, will recognize that you have a question. She will interrupt Mary Jo or myself at just the right time and read your question for you. Now, I sometimes go off track. So does Mary Jo, but me more often. And uh, Or sometimes we misinterpret what your question is, or sometimes you just have a follow-up question. If any of those things happen, all you need to do is type your follow-up questions here or whatever it is that you need to type here. Keep remembering to hit send. Uh, Leanne will keep interrupting us and, and keep us on track. Now, if you're not feeling shy, please press this button here. It's, uh, it looks like a hand with an arrow pointing upwards in front of it. That is our raise your hand button. Same thing, Leanne will uh, recognize that you have a question, but this time what she'll do is interrupt us and then unmute your microphone. Uh, that line of communication, that channel will remain open until we are done answering your question. So feel free to interrupt and uh, rephrase your question or get us back on track or ask a follow-up question or anything that you need to do during the answering of that question. So, without any further ado, I am going to press all of the magic buttons that I need to press to get us into tabs so that Mary Jo can talk about printer settings. So, I, what I'm going to start with is some tabs printer settings, but we're also going to expand on that just a little bit and go into some uh, accounts payable uh, for check uh, settings in, in your printer and, and some additional things there. But um, a lot of times when you're printing, you will come in and print a report, and you might have to choose the printer. Uh, I'll just grab a quick report here, and I want to print this detail AR report, and I say OK, and this box pops up. And you may have to change this printer every time that you come into the software. Um, maybe it always is your printer just because that's the only printer that you have or whatever that is. But I'm going to show you some little tips and things that you can do to go ahead and change some of these settings that are defaulting in here. So rather than just come in here and change it, I'm going to go out to our print settings, um, and that's under setup, and there's print setup here. And so we open up this little box right here, and it, right now I'm picking this Dell printer, which is our default printer, but this is where you would set your default printer. You would pick the printer that you want it to just automatically go to, not saying that you can't change it for other documents or other things that you want to do, but this particular printer then will be your default printer. There's three buttons here that you can uh, set some additional uh, print setup settings. And then you've also got some things in here. So we're just going to talk briefly on a couple of these things and then help you understand that just a little bit better. I will also tell you that there is a help button right here that would give you specific help on setting up printers. So if you get stuck on something and you're not exactly sure or you can't remember what I said, you can always come in here to the little help button and then that will also give you some more um, information. And you can print that out and keep it handy. So first, let's start with our page setup. These are just your generic, uh, your general, I shouldn't say generic, your general settings, so your margins. We want to set our margins and what our default margins are. 
uh, this can be changed based on reports. So you might have one report you want a half inch margin and another one that you want a you know, one inch margin, another one you just want a quarter inch margin. You can come in and change those margins in here. But this will be your default after you come out. This will be your default margins for all of your printing purposes. So the left margin here right now, these are very small margins. I think I would probably come in and do at least a quarter inch. Um, this, the, for some reason, the defaults are very tiny. So if you've got things going all the way out to the edge and you want to bring that in, come in here, change the margins, and that will solve that issue. You've also got this print offset adjustment for the left and the top. Generally, that's used for check printing. So if you've got your reports at a normal margin, but you need to bump something over to the, the left just a little bit so that your um, amount and uh, your, your person you're writing the check to is, is centered where it should be, or maybe bump down from the top because it's not lining up in your little boxes on your checks, this print offset adjustment is perfect for that. And we can talk about that a little more. I mean, this, this same um, uh, box is, is in accounts payable and trust and all those places. So you'll be able to do that printer adjustment if you need to. Same thing with reports though. If you need to bump a report down, you can keep that in there. But that printer offset adjustment is where you can change that. You would just say okay and then that again would go ahead and save those parameters. Your statement setup, this is where you're going to have some uh, very detailed things that you can do with the statements. First off, you can set what your font is. So if you have a normal font of 10-point Arial, that's great. So you can select, and if you needed to change it to Times New Roman or something that's 12-point or something like that, you can do that in here. These are all your font settings. The next thing here is um, if you're going to print envelopes, you can check this box. That will also allow you to do that. It's pretty self-explanatory. Your statement width, um, automatic 100% adjustment, or you can have fixed column widths. You can set these things. So if your statements aren't coming out exactly how you want to, you can play with this width here. And again, the help will give you some. I don't have time to go into all the details on everything, but the help will give you an article that can explain these in depth exactly what's going to happen if you click on this or that, or the fixed columns is this, or you, know, you can kind of play with those adjustments. These are a little more fine tuning. Enable statement design layout. If you are using the statement design layout uh, to design your statements, this box needs to be checked so that when you're printing your statements, it will know that we're going to go use that, that format that you've defined over there in those specific layouts. If this isn't checked, it's going to go back and try to start using some of the other settings that you have or the, just the default tab 3 setting that comes out of the box. So we want to make sure if you've designed a statement layout that this box is, is checked. Um, here's some page one and then a continuation page. So let's just say that you have your, your first page is going to be on your letterhead and that's going to come out of tray one, but then the second page or any continuing pages is just going to be on plain paper and that's going to come out of tray two or um, maybe you've got a different color page that comes out of page two or whatever that is. You can set these up here um, to come out of what source. So if uh, the first page always comes out of tray one, we would change this to be tray one. And same thing down here, your second and continuing pages would come out of tray two, or whatever that would be for your printers. You can specify blank lines from the top on either of these pages. So if you have zero because you're going to be using your letterhead and you don't need any blank lines, you can do that. Um, same thing before the detail. So if you need to put a little bit more space between you know, the, the top of your statement and then down at the bottom, how many lines before that detail starts to go. You can get a little bit um, uh, more defined on what you're doing. You can compress addresses. You can include bitmap images. If you have an image that you want in your statement that is a bitmap format, you can actually put this in here and you can place it where you want it. Um, continuation page, again, you have some other information. If I were printing envelopes and I had that box checked up here, then my envelopes come to life. So this may be an automatic, I, would, I don't remember what they call the envelope feed or if it's MPF or what it is, but you can, you know, whatever that, um, that tray is that the envelopes feed in, you can choose that then for those. So when you're printing envelopes after each statement, this is where you can come in and set those settings. And then also your por portrait and landscape, again, defaults for everything that you want to do so you don't have to go in and set this every single time. The next, um, let me cancel out of that, the next um, option here is your advanced printing features. 
This gives you some more fine tuning. Do you want to allow variable fonts and sizes and styles? Yes or no. Use commas in all your numeric fields. Allow gray text and lines. Do you want to preview your negative numbers in red? Sometimes when you're doing an AR report, that's really helpful. You want to see those negative numbers pop out on the screen when you're looking at that in red. And if you have a color printer, you may even want to print those negative numbers in red when you print out. So you can come in and you can tell it to do that. You can optimize it to the file to print. You can remove any formatting when you're going to Excel. These are, again, explained in a lot more detail in the help, but these boxes can help, again, fine tune what's coming out of your printer. You can adjust your grayscale. Um, do you want it a little darker or lighter? Um, and then your footer. Do you want to print some things in the footer or not? You may not want to print a footer. And some people, they'll have that printing out, and they're like, what is that? Why do they keep putting my initials and stuff at the bottom of my report? Well, you have the printer turned on. Print the printer, or print the footer, I'm sorry, turned on. So you might want to turn that off if you don't like that. And it puts a little bar there. So some, if you print a report with that on, you'll see what I'm talking about. It gives you that little line at the bottom. So that can be turned off. Um, and then you just want to make sure that you have the default uh, set. There's a little default button here that will then make all these settings be your default. So again, this is you print, set it up one time here, and you're good to go. I'm going to quick flip out into um, accounts payable just so that I can show you where it has just a few more things in here. So we're going to get into our sample data here. When I'm in my print setup over here, I have in my check setup here in the middle. Instead of statement setup, since I'm not in tabs anymore, you'll see first off that my page setup is the same. And again, here's my offset for my checks. And then here's my check setup. A lot of times you'll be printing those um, checks and they have another stub and nothing's printing on that second stub down below. And you're like, why is that nothing on that? Well, there's a little print stub, duplicate stub box here. And if that's not checked for that printer that you're printing on, that second stub isn't going to print. So you want to make sure that this is, this is a question I get so often. Why isn't that printing? It's because this little box isn't checked. So make sure if you've got double stub checks, you have that checked off. You can spell out the check amount. You can put the, um, if your uh, check numbers or your checks don't include their check numbers, I can't talk today, I'm telling you. But you can go in and you can um, put that on there if they're, if they're already pre-printed or not. So this one is saying the check numbers are pre-printed on the check. You, or if that's not the case and you need to print the check number, you can go ahead and do that and check that box. So you get to choose that a little bit further. You also can print the vendor number on the check stub, and you can print the memo on the checks. And this is for um, versions of uh, the, the most current versions of uh, AP uh, accounts payable because we had a check layout. I was it Paul? Was it 15? Um, did that change? I'm, I'm thinking it was 15 or I 16. I think it changed in 16. Yeah. Was, so if you're in a version 15 or newer, you may be still using the check format that doesn't have the memo that's able to be printed. But on version 16 for sure and 17, you can print a memo on the check, and this is where you can say, yes, print that memo and the memo line. So just check that um, and see if that's what you're using as far as versions, and then that could be available. And again, you can choose what paper source these checks are coming out of. You might have a tray that's just for checks, um, and that can then be defined here for your check printing. So that's just a little bit more details that can go on here. Um, and again, you have those same options in here with your grayscale and all of that. There are some additional setup down here for, you know, do you want your font to always just be automatic? Do you want to manually set it? If you manually set it, you can come in here and you can say, if it's this many columns, you can pick your fonts in here. So there's just, again, just a little bit more fine tuning that you can do here. While I'm in accounts payable, I'm just really briefly going to talk about maybe you have a printer that you're printing reports on and you want one set of settings but you use that same printer for printing checks, and when you print checks, you want to keep these default settings for that check printer. Or maybe you, you know, it's, it's always the same printer, but you want two different options to be able to say, I'm printing checks this time, and I want to keep those defaults. Or I'm printing reports this time, I want to just use this one. There are some instructions, and I'm going to give you a, a knowledge base article um, on how to set up a separate printer configuration for the same printer. And this is based in Windows, and it will give you instructions for XP and Vista and, and 7 and all of that. Um, but it is Article R10776. And, Paul, I'm going to show them how to get in there. So, yeah, I'm going to show them. So you don't have to go that way. I'm going to show you directly. He's, like, way ahead of me. But if you don't know how to get to Knowledge Base, all you're going to do is go to Help, and you're just going to go to Internet Resources, Knowledge Base. 
And this is going to take you right in where you can type that, that number I just gave you. And so it's, Paul typed it in manually, That's but you'll be able to go. Easy. I know. I like to do it the hard way. <laughs> He's going to go the roundabout way. And I'm not sure if our Google is going to open here or Chrome or whatever we're in. But you'll go right into the knowledge base. And it will have an article ID, and you're going to put in that. And I'll give it to you one more time. It is R. 10776. And you put that in, and that will give you detailed instructions on how you can set up a separate printer configuration for that same printer. So if I want, there it goes, it's just a little slow. So here's our article ID. I would just put that in. I'm going to just do R10776. Hit go. It's going to go ahead and open this article. You can print this article off, but here's your instructions. And what that will do is give you a choice in your drop down. And I would name it something. Like if you have our printer right now that we're using as a Dell, and I 3115 or something like that. And I would just leave that as my default printer for normal printing. But I would create, when I create this second configuration, I would name it something like the Dell 3115 check printer. And that way I would know when I do the drop down when I'm printing over in tabs or, or AP that I can just do, um, you know, print that. I'm going to go into the print setup just so I can get to the, the list here. So when I'm doing this drop down, I would right away know that here's my regular printer and here's the check printer and I can just pick the check printer and I would be able to print it out. Now you can set up as many of those as you want all across the office, anywhere that you want and have these, and, and for different reasons. You might have one printer configuration for your AP checks, but you might have another printer configuration for your trust checks. So you might have two check printers, trust checks and AP checks. So you can get really, you know, involved and detailed, but that'll give you just a little bit of background and a little bit of parameters to get you set up um, so that you don't have to keep picking your printer every time and choosing those defaults every single time. Paul? Awesome. Well, I was going to say I learned one new thing today, but you also schooled me on how to uh, get to the knowledge base quicker. But I didn't know that you could print negative numbers in red. I thought you could only display them on the screen. So there's always something that you can learn. I'm going to talk about one of my favorite features in tabs, which I think it's one of Mary Jo's too. One of everyone's favorite features in tabs, which is the client manager. Now, if I go into a firm where they've had tabs forever and maybe we're new to them uh, and they've got the current version, uh, one of the things I like to show people right away is the client manager because a lot of times they've gone ahead and updated their software and not even noticed this new thing called the client manager. Now, it should be on your main screen, but it's possible that you, if, if you customized your main screen, which I think is our topic for next month, but we won't go there now, uh, it may be that it's not on there anymore. Uh, and that may be why some clients don't get it automatically showing on that main screen when they do an update. Uh, but you will always find it in here in the client screen. Either way, both of these are the same icon, and they take you to this. Now, the client manager is a place where you can go and pull up a specific client. I'll pull up uh, uh, Andrew Gilbert. Oops, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll pull up uh, Daniel Klein. I hit the wrong button there. And from that screen, you can do just about anything. So here I am. I've got Daniel Klein pulled up. I've got uh, his Klein versus Simmons construction case because he may have more than one matter. And that's, it's a good time to point out the name's a little deceiving. It's more of a matter manager because you're pulling up a single matter on the screen and doing all sorts of stuff. I can go into the client settings just by clicking this link right here. These are all the screens you'd get if you just went into client directly. When I come out of there, by hitting escape is how I do it, I'm back in the client manager. I can see his AR balance, and I'm going to get somebody here. I'm going to move with your right and left arrow here. I'm going to get somebody who actually has some data in there, Marcus Phillips. You can see their AR balance. They currently know that they owe you $4,423.85. Want more detail? Click the button to the left. And what you see here is a complete breakdown by aging period, and by type of charge, fees, cost, finance, charge, and total. So here we are in the detail accounts receivable view where we can see all these things broken down by their, their uh, aging period and by their type of cost, uh, fees, costs, finance, charge, and total. Th this is also where we get to see the individual trust account bank balances. Now, 
it's unusual, but you can have a, a matter, have funds in multiple trust bank accounts. That's what this is showing you. It's not showing you the activity for the trust account, but it is showing you the, uh, the actual balance in trust, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm going to close that up. I'm going to go into Fee Whip. Here is Fee Whip for this particular matter. So if I needed to edit something, I could come here and double click on it like that, and it pulls it right up. Once I go back, I'm right back at the client manager. I've got new fees. Just come here, click Fee Whip, and then New. I'm into entering a new Fee Whip transaction for this particular client. I'm not going to save. And here I am back here. Um, cost whip, same thing. Okay. We don't have any there. If we did, we'd be seeing it. We could edit it. And uh, new takes me into a new one. You've got these 10 slots down here. And with these 10 slots, we're able to define exactly what we want. Maybe you don't ever want to print draft statements. Maybe you don't ever want to do a detail work and process, but you want to do something else. That's what this customize button does. And so if I want a detail work and process to instead be uh, a productivity report for that particular client, bam, it is now a productivity report for that particular client. And when I click productivity report in this particular client's client manager, I get a productivity report just for Phil, uh, Marcus Phillips' real estate acquisition case. So you have complete control over what goes down here, and these things that go down here are specific to the client that you have on the screen. So whatever it is that you tell it you want, here's a detailed uh, transaction file list. I'll close that up. Uh, here's a client ledger report. It's only for Marcus Phillips Real Estate Acquisition Matter, and therefore, I'm able to print this report very quickly for the client that I've got on the screen and any other report and do any other thing or look at any other bit of data. It is the go-to place to manage matter-specific information, be it your fees and costs, your normal WIP entries, your payments. If you have a client that you want to do more than one thing to, or you're working on their statement, you're working on their particular account, you're working on something specific to them that involves multiple things, this is the place to do it. And so that is the client manager. And Paul, can I just add one thing? I don't know if they can hear me. I'm hoping I'm thinking I'm uh, still on a different line. I'm I can sure. hear you, so I think okay. we can. Um, uh, this is another place where you can add unupdating statements, unbilling statements, and reprinting statements. So you get that client that lost their statement and all that. You've got this whole list, and he kind of skimmed over just a little, but you could reprint the statement from here, or you could unbill or unupdate and do all of those things. So when you're doing billing, that is huge. That helps you quite a bit. And then, of course, write up and write down and write off uh, is, is a big thing, too. So just keep in mind that's available in that long list. You can peruse that even more. So Yeah, exactly. Undo single updated statement, reprint single updated statement, just like Mary Jo said. Not just printing reports, not just you know information, but actually doing functions like uh, undoing a single updated statement. And here's the list again. Um, be sure to pay attention that it's when you first come in here, it's grouped by programs and then reports. But if you change the sorting by clicking on the word description, now you might be able to find what you're looking for a little bit easier because it's going to be sorted entirely based on that description. And there you have it. Now, when you get out of here after you've made these changes, even though you've gone into the run mode, this is like a toggle switch. You're either in the customize or you're in the run mode. When you get out, be careful because what it's going to ask you is, do you want to save the changes to the client manager? And a lot of times when I say save changes and I don't think I made any changes, I, I hit no. What it's asking is do you want to save the changes you made to these menu items and how they appear down here? So be very careful. Now, one other thing to know, and I'll change the, or I'll save those and then I'll go back in and we'll see that it still has these icons the, the way I left them. These icons that appear down here and the order that they appear in are specific to you as a logged in user on the machine you're on. So you can have one set of icons down here and somebody else in billing can have another set of icons 
and maybe an, an attorney or a group of attorneys will have yet another group of icons. And so we're giving people icons in the client manager that are meaningful to them and their specific tasks that they need to perform. And so that is the client manager, one of my favorite things. I love showing this to somebody that's never seen it, uh, that's been working with the software for a long time, because a lot of times that's, that's a, a, like a, a life changer for them. Um, next month, we're going to be talking about the differences between right up, right down, and right off. Mary Jo will take that topic for us. And I'm going to talk about eliminating duplicate vendors and payees in trust and vendors in AP. Uh, maybe you've created uh, uh, two vendors that are really the same company and you want to pull them together. There's a very simple way to do that, a couple things to consider. I do want to take you out here to our website. So I'll click on the new tab and I'm going to type attorneycomputersystems.com. And the reason I want to bring you out here is I want you to know that all of our videos, including all of the water cooler uh, meetings, and in fact, now we have... Uh, if you just click on videos, um, we actually describe all the videos out here. Or if you just hover over videos, you'll get the list right here with no description. So we've got our Tabs 3, Practice Master, and World Docs Virtual User Group meetings. We've got our Coffee Pot webinars. It's something I do every month. We've got our eBytes video series. Mary Jo records three of these every month. And we've got the Paul and Mary Jo show. One of these is released every month. A lot of video content. And if we go, for instance, to the TAP3 virtual user group meeting, uh, we will see the announcement of the topic for the next one, August. We just mentioned what we were talking about. Here it is listed. You can register for it by clicking either of these two links. As you scroll down, you will see recorded versions of the ones we've done in the past. This is the one you're listening to right now. So it is currently in post-production. But as we scroll down further, we'll see... Uh, links directly to YouTube videos. We also have this button up here, this search button, or this search box. So if I type something like email, I'll probably get something on emailing statements. I'll probably get something on Practice Master. Uh, yep. And then I get my list here. Manage your email, how to customize fine templates. That's a World Docs. So a lot of ways to get to the video content you want, a lot of video content. I've been informed by our humble and patient moderator that I believe we have a question. There's two questions, Paul. The okay. first one, and I believe these are both on the last topic you were speaking on. Do you, um, do you save the changes only for the client matter you're on? Nope. They are for you as a person logged into that machine. So whatever you change down here will be that way when you come back in as a user logged in on that particular machine no matter what matter you're on. Okay, and the second question, can a default set of reports be created for the client manager? Oh, that's an excellent question because I forgot to talk about that. Customize, thank you. So for instance, if I go into transaction file list, uh, you'll notice this report definition button. This allows you to change the report definition just for use in the client manager. Now let me give you an example of where that's important. You might have a default report definition for the client ledger that doesn't show people with zero balance because you just want to show ledger information for people that have a balance. And you run that for the entire firm every couple months for whatever reason. I don't care. And so your default report definition for the client ledger says, hey, don't show people that have a zero balance because we don't, we don't want them in this report. Well, that doesn't make sense in here. If you've got this person pulled up, whether they owe you money or not, if you click the client ledger report button, you want to see them. So coming in here when you're in the customized mode and highlighting client ledger and then going to the report definition will allow you to define a report definition that is specific to the client manager as opposed to the one that is being used out there when you're in the report being run for everybody. So one more question, Leanne? Yes, actually... Um, the last question he meant, uh, can I create a default report set that all users see so that they don't have to set up their own? No, the only way to do that is to go into their machines, and you can't even just log on to the tabs as them from your machine. You have to go to their machine and log in as them and set up these icons. You cannot set 
uh, the default for that. You have to you have to go to their machine and set them up for them individually. I wish there were. Is that all the questions, Leanne? Yes, that is all the questions. Okay, awesome. So there we are. Be sure to come back next month when we talk about uh, writing up and down and off and uh, and duplicate vendors and payees. Uh, everybody have a good rest of the day, rest of the month, and we will see you in August. Thanks much. Bye-bye.